Don't. Huh? Huh? What, what are you doing? Oh, I'm making a... No, I got a ritualistic sacrifice going on. We need these sponsorships. We need these pod sponsorships. What else do you want me to do? I mean, we passed the statistic, don't. We're 14 episodes deep now. You, you, you don't think that we should have a fucking sponsorship right now, don't? I'm desperate. Well, yeah, no, I, I get it, dog, but we, we, we have our first sponsor for this, for this episode. We got, we, we officially got our first sponsor. You should have some over there with you. It's official dog juice. Oh, it works. Have you taken a sip of this shit yet, dog? I haven't. Take a sip of that real quick. Let me take, let me take a little pixie of this dog juice, dog. This shit, dog. I'll tell you. This shit gets me so fucking amped up, dog. I'll fly a fucking plane through a building, dog. Now that's wet, dog. Oh, I'm the I'm wet as shit right now, dog. Coming to a podcast near you, dog juice. <laughs> Keep it wet, dog. <laughs> Welcome back to the dog cast, episode fourteen. We beat the statistic, dog. We made it. And it's only going to keep getting better and better. As always, it's myself, Shay, on the line. We got my co-host, Bridger, as well. And today ain't different than any other fucking Monday. We all know why you're here. You know why we're here. We're hitting you with the juice. And don't. Speaking of um, liquid beverages... Liquid, liquid beverages. Don't speaking of bevies. Mm. Um, did you know? Because you're a fan of football, you know. Of course. Um, did you know that Budweiser made personalized bottles for? They, they made 644 bottles for Lionel Messi, and they sent an individual bottle to every person that he has scored a goal on. Are you serious? Yeah. Bud Light. Bud Weiser. Bud Weiser. Dude, that's sick. Bud, Bud Weiser made 644 personalized bottles and sent those bottles to the goalies that he scored all of those goals on. So some people have multiple. Some people have, you know, one. Some people have a lot. You know what I mean? No way. Diego Alves got bottle tw- number 21 or, or 21 bottles. Never mind. He has 21 bottles. <laughs> Was this recent? Uh, no, because this, well, the tweet was recent, but it says, do you remember when Budweiser celebrated Lionel Messi's record-breaking 644 goals for Barcelona by sending personalized beers to the 160 goalkeepers that he scored against? Gotcha. So it says, remember when. Well, Don, speaking of soccer balls, um, Elon went on X today and said... Uh, he, he he posted this. It says, <laughs> "Wait, why are you laughing?" Speaking of soccer balls, don't Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find my cheat off. Channel it. Hit up all fucking. Was it nine? How many shockers do we have? Nine. Elon Musk went on X today and said, "Should X make a phone?" Would you buy an X phone and ditch iPhone? Be honest. You entirely own your data, completely private, and 100% secure. Free Starlink and free X premium. A for yes, B for no. What are the stats looking like on that? Most people are saying yes. Would you? I'd have to see it first. I like my iPhone too much. But I mean, this isn't, this isn't something that I had written down. I just saw this the other day. Did you know that Amazon tried to make a phone too? Oh, of course. Yeah, no, they failed, bro. Well, yeah. Anybody that tries to make a phone is kind of crazy. Somebody would say the exact same thing about a car company, though. Well, yeah. I think if anybody could do it, it's fucking Elon. Yeah, no. I think I would... Like I said, I would need to see the phone first because I just like the interface of the iPhone too much. But facts, I don't know, bro. Those are some good ass selling points, though. 
Because I begin random ass notifications on my iPhone sometimes where it's like, this password has appeared in a data leak. And I'm like, oh. You know what other one I get every day is the fucking, you're out of iCloud storage. Upgrade. Yeah. Like that's, dude, I know. Yeah. I'm not fucking paying for more iCloud, bro. Not yet. <laughs> At least, you know, <laughs> like I don't need that shit, bro. Like I, I'm not going to be buying like a, a fucking phone every fucking whatever, but like. No, that's it's like I, I'm not gonna need to transfer these photos any fucking time soon, bro. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, I have a video of some dude that committed armed robbery, but he has no arms. Is the thing armed ro- armed robbery? He has no arms, but he committed armed robbery. Explain this to me, no. Look at him, don't. Okay, so. To, oh my, I've actually seen this video. Yeah, okay, so for the viewers, this guy is in a fucking wheelchair. Okay, and he's pointing a fucking, that looks like a 9mm pistol. It's got some kind of muzzle extension. He just he just aff- affixed the extension. He's pointing a gun at the clerks. It's an automated wheelchair here. He's wearing a hat and a mask. How is no one, how is this person? Some guy's in the background. He doesn't give a fuck. You could just give him a dead leg and he'd drop that fucking gun real quick. How is he controlling the wheelchair? Well, because it's odd. Oh, he doesn't have arms. He has no arms. Yeah. And now he's holding it with one foot. Oh, my God. There's a joystick that he controls with his toes. Okay. I have a question, bro. Yeah. Somebody comes up to you. Mm -hmm. You're going to get 500 million. Mm, That's a little too much. No, I'm not going to give you that much. I'm going to give you 5 million bucks. No, 5 million dollars here. Mm Mm-hmm. For the taking, this guy presents to you an offer that you probably can't refuse. You're going to have to go into a bank and commit armed robbery. You're not going to kill anybody. You're not even going to walk into the place with bullet storm. You're going to walk in. You're going to point the gun at a clerk. You're going to ask her for a certain amount of money. It doesn't matter. You can choose that number on the fly. No one says you're a fly guy over there. Now, you're pointing the gun at the guy. You tell him that you need some money. Cops get called. You're going to get caught. You know what I'm saying? You're a mastermind, but robbing a bank is pretty much impossible nowadays with modern technology mm. so you're gonna get caught you're gonna serve some time in jail okay now the guy is going to tell you exactly and he's not lying in this scenario he is correct you are going to serve a total of five months in jail but you're in fucking jail okay like you're in jail like that part's not fake are you willing to walk into a bank with a real fucking gun and point it at somebody and sell it that you are robbing a fucking bank and that you will blow this fucking lady's face onto the wall behind her and walk out with a certain amount of cash to save her life and get arrested by the police and go through that entire process and stay five months in jail with no contact from anybody in your family or anybody that you know whatsoever but you will get five million dollars after and you will have to explain to them why you did it and proved and and have that conversation because as soon as you say yes you got to go into that fucking bank i'm going to jail yes i can't bail there's no bail fuck no i can't use the five million to pay bail no you haven't gotten it yet Part of the deal is to serve your term, no? Hmm. <clears throat> Five months in jail. Five months. Almost half a year. It goes on my record. It stays with me for the rest of my life. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I'm kind of 50-50 on this because I like that money, don't. But... Five, I don't, I don't know, five, five million seems a little bit low for me to go and do that, you know? Speaking of, uh, speaking of tellers in jail time, Don, okay. did you, did you see the Black Ops 6 trailer? I did. The teaser? The little teaser piece? What'd you think of it, bro? Are you talking about the Mount Rushmore one? Yeah. I did see that. And... It's interesting. Is that real? Did they actually put the things on the Mount Rushmore? No. I mean, I mean, yeah. I I kind of assumed, but then at the same time, I was like, I don't know. 
The editing is so good in that video. It looks fire, <clears throat> but I need gameplay. X to find, awesome. <laughs> We're getting into this? We're talking about this? What do you rate it out of 10 so far? Based off of the couple games that we played the other day, I'm going to give it a... Give it a 7. Yeah, that's about where I'm at. I gave it a 7. I mean, I was hyped for it, but it's Ubisoft, and they know how to do shit wrong. <laughs> so It makes no sense to me. They just made their own version of, like, of Warzone, basically, or of Call of Duty now. They were like, okay, let's let's make let's make a first person shooter game and let's act like we're gonna give the people what they want from the old Call of Duties that they miss. So they're gonna come to us, of course, and we're gonna make it free to play. So obviously they're gonna download and they're gonna try it out. But let's make a collection of a lot of of people from the Ubisoft universe, and we're gonna put these people in as the playable characters. But first of all, they didn't even put in the best Ubisoft people. Exactly. Am I going to visit Re or X Defiant again? Revisit X Defiant again? Probably not. Uh, speaking of video games, too, I was going to bring up... Um, I was at... I was, there in, I was downstairs in the lobby. And I was in the cafe getting myself a little coffee. Right? Of course. While the coffee was brewing, getting ready, getting ready for me to drink and all, um, they they had the TV on playing the news. And on the news, they were talking about cat eye surgery, uh, cant cantoplasty, and how okay you can get these cat eyes, and your eyes will look sexy. You know what I'm saying? It's like taking over Hollywood. The Jenners do it. Other celebrities. Did you know that they fucking do this? I only thought motherfuckers with gauges in their lip would do some shit like this. You know what I mean? Well, there's that fetish of like trying to be a cat and shit. I can see those people doing it. Well, some furry shit. But, you know. Are you talking about like the pupils? No, 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 no. You get your eye to look like a cat eye, kind of. Okay, yeah, yeah Like your yeah. actual eye shape. Yeah, yeah. You get, like, a brow lift and all sorts of shit. Yeah, where it, like, pulls everything yeah. this way. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying here, though. See, I thought you were talking about, like, on your pupils, you know? No laser eye therapy here, though. That shit would be crazy. I was like, they can do that successfully? Like... You know, make this have like slits on your eyes for your pupils, you know what I mean? They were also talking about snails. Okay. Can slime on your face and like and like move all around your face. They like put like a big snail on your face. And like some like TikTok doctor was on there as like a guest talking about it. And you put the snail on your face and then it gets you like smooth skin. Yeah. I don't I'm not going to lie to all that shit was some of the funniest shit I'd ever seen in my life. What I wanted to do after I watched all that on that TV while my coffee was fucking brewing and I smelled my coffee in the fucking cafe piece. I wanted to go upstairs. I wanted to spark up a nice fucking J and all. And I wanted to sit back. I wanted to fucking put on my sandals. And I wanted to fucking just, just relax, feel my weight press against this chair right here. And just watch the fucking news and hear what they had to say about this snail piece, no? But you know what I did, no? What did you do? I grabbed my coffee and I went upstairs and I loaded up the PlayStation 5, no? Because we don't do news around here, I guess. I mean, rightfully so. Do you have cable? We don't do cable around here, no? We're in the future over here. I don't have cable. I don't... I can't go just watch the news willy-nilly. Can I see it on Twitter? Yeah, I can see it on Twitter. Shout out to Elon Musk. Um, can I see it from a subscription service from Fox? Yes, I can, but I'm not paying for Fox. You know? Well, actually, speaking of news, don't. CNN News exclusive on this piece. Um, a video just came out of Diddy. 
assaulting Cassie. <laughs> Did you see his apology video to it? I feel like he's doing this to up his image again. Because, yeah, well, he hasn't given a fuck through everything that he's been going through. So, I mean, Diddy could have easily not made an apology video. I didn't see it. You know what I mean? So I was like, that's fucking Diddy. You know what I mean? That's just that's just him. But the fact that he did make one, I'm like, okay. Maybe he's getting a little spooked now about everything that's going on. No, exactly. That's some PR manager type shit. This is a big time of the podcast. Mm. That bitch is around to stay and all. I wish it was gone. I wish nobody shat in the deli section. Your delicatessen is going to be a little molested for a little bit longer. A man suspected of intentionally contaminating food at about a dozen public buffets over recent months was arrested after spraying a foul liquid on a deli salad bar in Midtown. Marco Aralano, 34, was spotted pouring bottles of human feces and urine onto the salad bar at the Alpine Gourmet Farm Deli on 7th Avenue near 36th Street Friday night. Workers at the deli grabbed the feces flinging fiend after they noticed him emptying two bottles onto the food and trays. Cops responded to the bizarre call and arrested Aralano and confiscated the bottles which were sent to the health department for testing. Oh, it makes me sick just thinking about it, said Alpine customer Don Riggins, a 33-year-old beautician from the Bronx. What kind of person would do that? It's disgusting. Aralano was charged with reckless endangerment, criminal mischief, and criminal tampering and public urination. Officials said Aralano was already been identified by witnesses as the man who recently fouled the food at Mike's Takeaway Deli in Grand Central and will soon be charged for that case as well. Deli customer Keisha Williamson said the incident explains why the deli salads in her area often taste like garbage. Now, don't. This guy filled two bottles up with shit, another with urine, poured it all over the salad bar at the deli. He's been suspected of fouling a dozen public buffets and he's also being charged right now for doing the same exact thing to another deli. So you're telling me that the Walmart deli dump, this was like, she is, is she his apprentice? You know what I mean? Is this, is this some Sith Lord shit going on right now? Don? Yeah. Because homie who is suspected of tampering with 12 delis this guy's fucking dark city is, you know what I mean? Bitch in the Walmart deli, she's like Darth Maul. If I'm going to a spot, whether that be a deli or Walmart deli, it's still a deli. You don't. I'm I'm gonna be just as point is, I'm gonna be just as scared doing that as I would be flying now with the Boeing incidents that are going on. <laughs> it's. The same equivalent now. What a fucking sad world we live in, bro. It's been fucked recently. It's been a little fucked, you know. We're in a dark time, don't. This episode is brought to you by Don't Juice, the official juice of the Don't Cast. Um, you can get this nowhere right now, but I will tell you that um, it, it tastes good. Um, it's gonna come to it's gonna come to markets near you. Okay, it's the official sponsor of the podcast. Keep it wet. Keep it wet, don't. But since you and I are both flying over here, uh, we're flying. But it's not on a Boeing 777, don't. Because, because this 
I don't think I want to go on one anymore, though, because this one here, um, some failed on another Boeing flight, um, computer-wise, you know, hardware-wise. Um, on a flight from Singapore, or no, on a flight from London, on a flight from London to Singapore, um, a Boeing 777, like airliner, um, it experienced a 7,000 foot drop in the air. And the photos that I'm seeing from this and the videos on this tweet, um, they're a little, they're a little fucked, don't they're a little horrific because I did a little zoom in, I did a little pinch and zoom on these pics and on every single one of these pics, somebody's bleeding, <laughs> a passenger is bleeding like bad. And, um, <laughs> there's a video, <laughs> well, not, well, well, from a place that you don't want to be bleeding from. You what, know what place I mean? was it? The face and the head. What place do you want to bleed from? Well, nowhere on your body, but you know, if you <laughs> don't, if you're bleeding, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little cut. It's a little cut on your fingy. That's sad, no? This man right here. Has a couple bloodstreams from his forehead, bro. Did anybody die? I don't think so. That's good. Because I mean, I think they just made an emergency landing at the end of that. You know what I mean? Like it was just, it's just it just says passengers were flung to the ceiling when it experienced a seven thousand foot drop and seven thousand seven thousand feet drop possibly or possible only if the plane was an autopilot it was an autopilot possible sensor gauging the height sent wrong data that is not proper english some went wrong with the computers don't and they dropped seven thousand feet in the air and people got hurt <laughs> that's another w for boeing <laughs> yeah another w for boeing and l for us l for us we got places to go we got places to be I mean, I'm not even surprised at this point, bro. They've had so many, like, worse things happen that I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Boeing is the worst plane company of all time now. And they run the industry, basically. Oh, they monopolize it. Exactly. Which is the most fucked thing about it, because I need to get places. That's why I'm a little bit worried about my fucking flight in July, bro. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Like, I mean, I still fly. I'm I'm down with flying, you know. What am I gonna do? Not fly and no? all? What how else are you gonna get there, don't you gonna drive to Florida? I'm not driving to shit, don't I'm not driving my car to anywhere, don't you wanna drive for four days or do you wanna fly for four hours? I'm a fly, don't. Have I heard about plane crashes? Yes. Have I heard about a plane malfunctioning once a week? Like, for a couple months? No, I haven't. Don't. So it's a little nerve-wracking. Why is it the regular? I don't know. The stats just went up for possibilities of dying in a plane accident. Yeah. No, 100%. But this is just a little fucking crazy for somebody to do. If this was coincidental... You know, it is what it is. That shit is fucking crazy. But I don't think so, because this artist made a painting, or he, he painted a portrait of, uh, of Prince Charles. Have you seen it? Oh, I've seen it. Have you seen it doubled? That's what I'm talking about. It shows the, fu it shows the fucking devil, literally. <laughs> no, like, it literally does, bro. It's insane. That's a crazy... Like a, it's that's a it's a crazy accurate depiction. Um, yeah, it's yeah. too coincidental. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's fucking crazy, bro. For somebody to do this, yeah, like, con like consciously. I'm gonna yeah, be honest like, too. I like the artwork. So do I. I mean, yeah, it's tight as fuck. But this is like some medieval shit to do. You know, Facts. like the, it's like, a I feel gremlin. like I would hear about this. It is. I feel like I would hear about this in like 
this is like a Game of Thrones episode or like a like some King Arthur story type shit. You know what I mean? Like back in the medieval days. So I was on I was on fucking X. All right, I was on X. I was I was surfing. I was surfing fucking X, and I found a guy that was like next to like this doll mm-hmm. that he had married. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is a little dark. I ended up learning more about it. Mm. So I'm going to start you off with this piece here. Don't a man's or. Okay. I'm going to start you off with this piece here. Don't Christian Montenegro believes that the doll Natalia Ortiz is his partner and the mother of his child. He has previously confronted his followers about their concerns surrounding the relationship. He said, If it weren't for the dolls, I'd be more lonely than anyone. At least I have something. With Natalia, we watch TV and talk about everything. They don't know how much I love her. A man married to a rag doll was left distraught, believing his wife fell ill, needing to an emergency treatment. He ends up calling a fucking ambulance. They pick her up. And a team of paramedics, you know, they end up arriving. And they treat Natalia, who um, was the obvious wife of uh, the man from fucking Colombia, Christian here. And then in a clip online, the ragdoll is shown laying in the back of an ambulance. And paramedics are attending to her. I got fucking, like, confused by this entire thing because there's literally pictures of him with this doll kissing it. They go to fucking vacations together. Like, they're fucking everywhere. And I ended up being on Reddit by the end of this, and I learned about this other story. It goes a little bit deeper here with the dolls. So there's this man, don't... Carl Stanzler was born on February 8th, 1877 he grew up in germany and he moved to australia when like world war one was happening and because of his german heritage he was placed into a concentration camp for like safekeeping he returned to germany after the war where he married doris schaffer and had two children with her in the 1920s In 1926, Tanzler had decided to move his family to America, and they settled in Florida. The following year, he accepted a job as a radiology technician at the U.S. Marine Hospital in Key West and left his wife and children because of the move to the South. Three years later, he caught his first glimpse of the woman of his childhood dreams. This is a love story here, Don. Okay? So Maria Elena Milagro de Hoyas was the Cuban-American daughter of a Key West cigar maker. Born in 1909, she was 17 when she married a man named Luis Mesa in 1926. Sadly, their marriage fell apart after Elena suffered a miscarriage, okay? Mesa moved to Miami, the husband, leaving his wife behind in Key West. To make matters even worse, don't, Elena was soon diagnosed with tuberculosis. On April 22nd of 1930, she walked into the U.S. Marine Hospital for treatment, where Tanzel lived. And she met Carl Tanzler. He was 53 at the time and she was 20. It's a 33-year gap. Though he specialized in radiology being the technician, Tanzler became determined to cure young Elena, who he believed was present, uh, was meant to be his true love. Over the next 18 months, Tanzler showed Elena over the next 18 months. Tanzler showered Elena with gifts and jewelry and clothing and professed his love to her. But tragically, Elena de Hoyas succumbed her illness and died on October 25th of 1931, just a year later. 
at the age of 22. Tanzler ended up paying for her funeral and insisted on purchasing a pricey stone as a mantle in Key West Cemetery for her remains. For the next two years, Carl Tanzler, the German man, visited Elena every evening. He frequently ser serenaded her grave, singing her favorite Spanish songs. After dark, on an evening of April 1933, Carl Tanzler crept into Key West Cemetery and removed Elena's body from her tomb. After nearly two years, Elena's corpse was in poor shape. After dragging her body to his home in a toy wagon, Tanzler set to work securing her limbs to her torso with piano wire. He then replaced her decaying skin with silk, and he'd soak it in wax and plaster fashioned a wig from the hair that had fallen off of her skull, and doused her in disinfectants and perfume to cover the odor of rotting flesh. Tanzler dressed Elena and kept her in his bed, where he slept to, with her every single night. He engaged in necrophilia with the corpse by inserting a tube inside her vagina. For the next seven years, Carl Tanzler lived with the body of Elena de Hoyas. Tanzler was later arrested and charged with wantonly and maliciously destroying a grave and removing a body without authorization. However, the statute the statu of limitations of Tanzler's crimes had expired by the time he was arrested, and he was soon released. He actually received quite a bit of compassion after the fact and some women even viewing him as hopeless, alibi as centric, and romantic. Meanwhile, Elena de Hoyes' body was placed on display at a local funeral home where nearly 7,000 people came to see the corrupted corpse for themselves. She was finally laid to rest, and for all, in an unmarked grave at Key West Cemetery. What do you think about this, Don? I gave you a lot of information in there. I downloaded a lot of gigabytes of information in that little skull of yours, Don. What do you think about this little base here, Don? Okay, I want to. I want to say one of the most, like the probably the most fucked up part about that to me right now. <laughs> why'd they put the body on display, bro? Why the fuck did they put the body on the display? Let me not excuse. Um, the the German mad scientist, you know, yeah, Richthofen. Let me not excuse Doctor Edward Richthofen over here. Don't let me. But let me say first of all, what do you? What do you do as a parent? You know, <laughs> if you if you get the call being like, hey. Um, your daughter's grave, you, you know that? You know your daughter, she died, right? Yeah, about that. Yeah, the body, the, the, the grave that you put her in, it's, it's she's gone now. She's, she's not there anymore. She's absent? You know? <laughs> like, what do you, what do you do then? To, how long did Homie have the body for? It's a good question that I don't have an answer to. Um, seven years total, he was, like, sleeping with it. I don't know if that counts seven as of the... <laughs> fucking years, don't... He, he slept next to the body for seven years, yeah. She was dead for nine when they found it, then. Something like that, yeah. You upkept the, you upkept the corpse for seven fucking years? Seven years. That's a long time, bro. Well, I guess he had no fucking work to do. He stuffed her body and fucking covered it in silk, bro. What is How seven years ago? That's 2017. From right. now, yeah. Yeah. That's a long time ago, bro. Yeah. The, bro. <laughs> 
So when did this happen? You said he came over in the 1940s? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so this happened like the 50s? Oh, um, this happened... Okay, so he was born in 1870, 70s... Uh, wait, hold on. Okay. On eight, on, in 1930, she walked into the hospital. Um, she died in... She, she died a year later in 1931... He removed the body in 1933. And then he had it for seven fucking years. He had this body until 1940. Pretty much, yeah. The fact that it happened back then kind of gives it like a darker tone to it, too. Yeah, I feel like it'd be more crazier if it happened nowadays, though. Oh, well, it totally fucking would. Like, if it was like, hey, last week this guy stole a body... Or we found out that a body, we found this man seven years later today that has been sleeping with a body for seven years. I'd be like, what the fuck, bro? Since with, like, with like TikTok out and shit? Like, bro, we're in a different era here, bro. Like, people aren't doing that. Well, I mean, homie with the, homie with the fucking. Like, back then was more darker. But back then, it was more, I feel like, regular for shit like this to happen. Like, I feel like if it happened nowadays, it'd be a little, it'd be different. Um, congratulations to episode 14. So the statistic for podcasts that are just starting out is they usually quit after episode 13. We passed that statistic, don't worry, on the 14th, come on, dude. So, you know. Every Monday from here on out, we're keeping it going. We're keeping it rolling. We're keeping it wet with the Dog Juice sponsor. We're keeping Dog. it wet. Dog, official sponsor of the Dog Cast, Dog. Look at the Dog drinking that fucking juice over there, Dog. That one's wet, we're good. Dog. <laughs> That's a wet Dog. I set, it. I set it down on my mouse and I exited out of Twitter on accident. Oh, that's all good. We're at the end of the episode. You know, speaking of Twitter, yeah. audience, go follow us on Twitter. Go follow us on Instagram. Go follow us on TikTok. We got the reels coming out. You know what I mean? We got the content other than the YouTubes. And, uh, you know, if you don't know, if you don't know what the username is, it's either in the description or you can just go look up Dormcast anywhere and you'll find us. We're one of a kind. We're the only don'ts. We're the only don'ts. Cheers, don't. You know what I mean? Cheers, don't. Let's go do some spy shit. Let's keep it wet. And we'll see you next week. Let's play video games, don't. Let's go play video fuegos, (laughs) don't. Video hombres, don't. Video hombres. Video juegos, don't. It's about that time. Later, don't. Later, don't.